Hi everyone, welcome to week two of the evolution and biology of sex. This week's topic will be evolution and natural selection, and in lab this week we'll be looking at the experimental evolution of E. coli. Escherichia coli is a bacteria that is commonly found in the human gut. It is used in research and for medical purposes, such as for producing insulin, However, wild strains can be pathogenic. Triclosan is the antibacterial agent that we will be working with this week in lab. It is used to clean surfaces and it was recently banned from soaps because of adverse health effects. Our question this week in lab is going to be, can we evolve E. coli in the lab to make it resistant to triclosan, the antibacterial agent? I'm going to ask two questions that I want you to consider. The first, what is evolution? How would the E. coli population compare to the start E. coli population if evolution has happened? And the second question, if we do get evolution of E. coli, what would be the most likely mechanism? Given our experimental procedure, how do you know which mechanism is most likely? I'm going to continue by going over the experimental procedure for this week in lab. So our first step is to take an uninoculated plate. So this plate will just be filled with agar, which is a growth medium for the bacteria. Then you're going to plate a lawn of E. coli. After this lawn has been plated, you're going to place a paper with triclosan in the center. Remember, triclosan is our antibacterial agent. Take a moment to think about the following questions. If bacteria is not resistant to triclosan, where will it grow? Where will it not grow? It's important to note that the concentration of triclosan varies with distance from the paper, meaning that the concentration of the antibacterial agent is probably the most dense right on the paper or near the dot and becomes less dense as we get farther outwards. Take a moment and consider that these three brown boxes are different bacterial colonies. Which of these colonies do you think are resistant and which are probably not resistant to the antibacterial agent? Here you can see that the colony that is closest to the dot is probably resistant to the antibacterial agent and those that are farther away are probably not resistant. Following our procedure, we initially plated a lawn of E. coli, thus inoculating the plate. A piece of paper dipped in triclosan was placed in the center, and then we waited 24 hours. You can see that there should be a clearance zone where no E. coli is growing, and around this zone there will be E. coli growth surrounding the outsides of the plate. After measuring this clearance zone where there's no growth, we're going to take some colonies from right around the edge of the no growth zone, which are most likely our most resistant colonies or bacterial cells, and we're going to scrape some of those up and put them in a liquid bacterial growth medium, so this uninoculated liquid. Step 5 highlights this saying that we will be re-inoculating cells from the periphery of the clearance zone. Finally, we will be repeating this entire procedure four times in the hope of evolving our E. coli species over these four generations. And a final reminder that it is important to label your plates and tubes to ensure that we're keeping everything straight. Good luck and have fun in lab this week!